Let's just get this out of the way at the start. Yes, account for PlayStation Network required on PC for the Until Dawn remake. Now, this is an Unreal Engine 5 remake of the, I think, 2015 game Until Dawn. This is the first time we'll have a chance to play it on PC. The graphics have been heavily updated, but like the other recent PlayStation games, you will need a PlayStation account to sign into. I know many people don't care, but many people care deeply, so there's that. Uh, they are adding full DualSense controller support on the PC, uh, as well as, you know, unlocked frame rates, ultra-wide aspect ratio support, uh, and, you know, that just kind of general stuff. One of the big things is we will get upscaling with F FSR 3 and DLSS 3, and it is FSR 3.1 and does include frame generation support. So, uh, general support of all of the, uh, you know, main PC features you would be looking for, uh, and the game is coming out on October 4th. Now, what about the system requirements? Can your PC run it? Uh, one nice thing here is the overall system requirements chart here seems pretty comprehensive, and I'm looking for any footnotes mentioning upscaling, and I'm not seeing it. However, that doesn't mean there's for sure no upscaling involved here, and that's going to be one of my main question marks uh, when we actually get this game and see how it runs. Uh, because being an Unreal Engine 5 game, I know that those games are often incredibly heavy, especially as resolution increases, unless you're using upscaling very heavily. And so, for example, playing a game at Ultra 4K 60, if it's really native resolution on an Unreal Engine 5 game, oftentimes a 4090 is struggling with that. Uh, but this game is claiming that a 3080 Ti or a 6900 XT can handle it. Now, maybe it's just that the graphics in the game are just hitting, you know, maybe a less ambitious target. It is, again, remaking a 2015 game. Uh, so that could explain that, but again, there is that bit of a question mark here. Now, this is one of the, uh, like I said, better system requirements charts where we get a variety of settings, and they are saying what settings are being used clearly, and a variety of resolutions and frame rates are stated clearly as well. That being said, generally in system requirements charts, when you see 30 FPS, it doesn't really mean exactly 30, and, and when you see 60, it doesn't really mean exactly 60. Uh, it usually means, like, like if, if you... Uh, if it says 30, you sometimes, you know, maybe you'd actually be getting 40. You're just not able to lock to 60. They're just kind of in that ballpark generally. All right, overall thoughts. They are saying that you can run it on Windows 10 or 11. You need 70 gigabytes on the SSD. And they are saying that at the higher settings uh, and resolutions, they're recommending it be an NVMe SSD, not just uh, any old, you know, SATA SSD you had lying around. Uh, so, you know, uh, whether that really matters in practice, we'll have to find out with some actual testing, but that uh, you know is something to watch out for. And notice no HDD support is listed. Again, could you run the game on an HDD? Maybe, but will it be you know supported? Looks like no. Uh, as far as RAM goes, looks like only eight gigabytes are required to get in the door, although keep in mind we're talking low settings, 720p 30 FPS, uh, and 16 gigabytes of RAM should be fine for any settings uh, you wanna play in the game. Now, overall on the CPU side of things, uh, things don't look to be getting too crazy. Uh, to reach 60 FPS, uh, it's looking like having an Intel Core i5-8600 or an AMD Ryzen 2700X should be enough. Uh, and if you're only wanting to play the game at 30 FPS at the lowest settings and get in the door, uh, they're saying an i7-4790K or Ryzen 5 1500X or similar processor with AVX support. So they are stating AVX support. Uh, so what are these processors if you're not sure? So an i7-4790K is a four core eight thread processor from way back in, geez, it was, it was a while ago, wasn't it? It looks like 2014. Uh, so yeah, it was high-end at the time, but we are talking way back in 2014. That is a full decade old at this point. Uh, and the Ryzen 5 1500X was a four-core, eight-thread processor from uh, a newer generation, April 2017. Uh, but again, it was just a mid-range chip from, from 2017. Was that seven years ago now at this point? I feel like I'm getting old. Anyway, um, 
And like I said, the mid-range chips to run the game at 60 FPS uh, look like an i5-8600, which is six core, six thread from a newer generation, but still only 2018. So we are talking six years, a mid-range chip from six years ago. And the 2700X, that's eight core, 16 thread, um, is from 2018. So again, six year old part. It's not asking anything too crazy. The highest end CPUs that they list here are an uh, i7-11700K, uh, which is an eight core 16 thread chip from 2021. So we are talking a bit newer here. Um, but uh, if you could reach 60 FPS on the other chips, then I I'm not convinced you really need to step it up. Sometimes system requirements lists go a little overboard on their highest end spec. Although if the higher end spec does include ray tracing, sometimes that does put a burden, uh, additional burden on the CPU. Uh, they list the Ryzen 7 5800X 3D uh, alongside that 11700K for the highest end settings. And again, that's a, a high end chip and it was the first 3D vCache chip from AMD. And this is from 2022. Uh, like I, uh, I, I did mention that the game does support ray tracing and it's unclear if any of these system requirements are using ray tracing as they just have named presets like ultra, high, recommended, and minimum. They're not specifically stating uh, whether ray tracing is turned on. Now, my gut feeling is the answer is no, because um, a 3080 Ti and a 6900 XT are a pretty good match when you're not ray tracing, but if there's any heavy ray tracing effects involved, uh, generally the 3080 Ti would um, outperform the 6900 XT more significantly. Uh, same thing with like a 3080 and a 6800 XT. Very closely matched in rasterized performance, uh, but if we were talking ray tracing performance, generally we would see the 3080 pull foot further ahead, unless it's just really light ray tracing effects. Now, as far as what they're claiming, uh, they are saying that it has a curated set of ray tracing features, such as shadows, reflections, and ambient occlusion. Now, uh, sometimes if you just run in some shadows or something, it's no big deal. But if you're running shadows and reflections and ambient occlusion, I would generally expect the, um, you know, the, the NVIDIA GPUs to pull a bit further ahead uh, than what we're seeing in that system requirement chart. So maybe they're, like I said, maybe these effects aren't included in those presets, question mark, uh, we'll, we'll have to see. Sometimes if they're running really low quality versions of these effects, though, it's, it's maybe not... Um, not anything too crazy. Now, what about the GPUs, the moment you've all been waiting for? So if you wanna play the game at low 720p 30 FPS, looks like you can get in the door with a GeForce GTX 1660 or a Radeon RX 470, or they say an equivalent card with minimum six gigabytes of VRAM. So a couple of things on that. First of all, notice minimum six gigabytes of VRAM. So even though the cards like the 1660 and the 470 aren't asking for anything too crazy. Um, you know, if you have an older card with only four gigabytes of VRAM, for example, they are saying that that is unsupported. Now, what, maybe you could try to run the game and see what happens, uh, but they are specifically s stating a minimum of six gigabytes of VRAM. They're also showing a card like the 2060, which is only a six gigabyte VRAM card, unless they mean the, uh, you know, more rare and not the original version, 12 gigabyte version of the card, which I think is unlikely here. Looks like you could at least go up to medium settings, 1080p 60 uh, on a six gigabyte VRAM card as it's listed here. Uh, now, what about they're saying, you know, or equivalent card, right? So what if your card isn't on this list? What do you do? Well, I highly recommend checking out Tech Power Up's GPU database. So if we pop over to this, and I'll try to remember to link it in the video description, uh, but the Tech Power Up GPU database, so you can search for a card, like in this case, the minimum card they're listing, like the GTX 1660. And not only does it tell you info about the card, but you can scroll down. Uh, and it'll give you a relative performance chart. Now this is ballpark figures and it might not, uh, it might not line up to the exact performance in this specific game. So do keep that in mind. But um, you know, you get a rough idea of where your car would fall relative to this. So like for example, if you had a 980, T 980 Ti, that's in a similar performance class. If you had a 1650 Super, that's 10% slower. If you have a 980, that's uh, you know about 11% slower. 6500 XT, that's 11% uh, slower. But wait, doesn't it? 6500 XT I think has four gigabyte versions where um, if you have a four gigabyte version of that card, that's where now you have to run into, ah, so I'm in a similar performance class, 
but I only have four gigabytes of VRAM, not six, and they're listing that six. So you're gonna have to be careful there if you're on some of these older graphics cards. Now, interestingly, uh, the 470 that they listed, according to this relative performance chart, is uh, you know actually fairly significantly different in performance here. We'd be seeing it as about 29% slower, according to the relative performance chart. Now, in some games, optimizations differ, and you know it's also possible that they're just like, okay, these are cards that they had in their low-end test system. They confirmed that you could play the game at 720p 30 FPS, and so they're throwing them on this chart, and they're not saying that you're getting exactly the same performance. You know, maybe the 470 is 720p 30 FPS, and the 1660 is 720p 40 FPS, but neither of them is hitting 60, so they're calling it, right, they're just lumping them into that same category. Because uh, I will say again, there is uh, generally a performance difference between these cards. Uh, thoughts on, the, uh, on that, though, is, I mean, uh, okay, it's an Unreal Engine 5 game, and you're playing it on fairly old and not super high-end hardware here. Uh, so the main thing to watch out there for, though, is that 6 gigabyte VRAM limit. As far as the 1080p 60 goes, uh, for medium settings, okay, RTX 2060, again, they're showing a 6 gigabyte card can probably run it, and an RX 6600 XT. You've been able to buy those for around $220 for a long time now, so it's looking like if you want to play the game medium settings, 60 FPS at 1080p, unless there's hidden upscaling in these settings, which again, sometimes that happens, and then we get all get super disappointed, but it's not listed as requiring upscaling, well, let's go ahead and take a look. So, uh, going from the 1660, you can see a lot of cards, uh, like, you know, an RTX 3050, that's a bit more powerful. Uh, you know, maybe going up to the, the 1080 and now the 2060. So cards like the 1080, 2060, they're all kind of around what they're listing as that 1080p 60 medium settings uh, sweet spot. And if I set the 2060 now as the baseline, uh, we can see that you... Uh, if you go up here, you can see cards getting more and more powerful, and then you get to that 6600 XT, which is a 25% more powerful graphics card generally. Uh, so maybe there is a bit of a question, okay, so um, uh, is, is there some difference in AMD optimization for this title, or again, is it just a card that they had in their kind of mid -range, older mid-range test system, and that's what they're listing here? Either way, you can see a bunch of cards in between, so if you have one of these, you're within this ballpark of that 1080p medium 60 FPS, uh, you know, uh, sweet spot, I, I guess we could call it. Now the high settings um, are at either 1440p 60 or 4K 30, uh, we're going up to an RTX 3080 or an RX 6800 XT. Now again, playing a, a new Unreal Engine 5 game at 1440p 60 FPS, uh, at high settings on a card like an RTX 3080 or RX 6800 XT, to me sounds perfectly reasonable. Again, as long as this isn't relying super heavily on aggressive upscaling and or frame generation uh, that is not being stated in the settings, right? Uh, that's kind of that one question mark we still have and need to see uh, how it goes on release. Now again, the 3080 and the 6800 XT are a lot more powerful than these 1080p medium GPUs uh, that we're seeing here. So for example, if I leave the 2060 as a baseline and we scroll up, maybe you'll spot your card somewhere in between. That means, you know, maybe you could increase some settings or the frame rate a bit. Uh, but going all the way up to a 3080 is more than doubling the performance here from a 2060. We're seeing about 2.26 times the performance here. Uh, but again, we're increasing graphic settings and the resolution and sticking to 60 FPS for 1440p. So um, yeah, I guess that all can make sense here. And uh, notice that if I set the 3080 as the baseline, uh, the 6800 XT does again show up as very, very similar in performance. So these two cards do make sense being listed near each other. Again, especially if ray tracing is not involved in these settings. Uh, which is why I was kind of having that, uh, you know, I, I, that, that's my uh, guess but based on this, but it didn't specify. Now, if you wanted to move up to 4K60, they are saying you should jump up to a 3080 Ti or an RX 6900 XT. Now, this is again where I get a little bit suspicious that we're not talking about native resolution here because they're saying 4K60, whereas here they were saying 4K30, Now, and we're also moving up from high to very high. So if you were actually significantly increasing your frame rate and increasing your graphics settings, you would expect to require a much more powerful graphics card. 
But the 3080 going up to a 3080 Ti is not a significant increase. And the 6800 XT going up to 6900 XT is not a significant increase. So like if we look at it here, a 3080 as 100% baseline uh, going to a 3080 Ti, we're only talking 12% more performance. We're, there's really not much here. And the 6900 XT in here, um, they're listing it here is only like a 4% increase, or if you set the 6800 XT as your baseline, uh, then going from that to the 6900 XT is like, a, they're saying 8% performance increase here. And so even if you slightly disagree with these relative performance numbers by a few percent, um, like, I don't see anything indicating we can go from 4K30 to 4K60, let alone in, uh, combined with an increase from high to very high, unless you're also more aggressively upscaling and or using frame generation. But again, they're not specifying any of the um, settings here are including frame generation or upscaling, but th things like that make me suspicious. So that's kind of that caveat I'll leave you here with at the end is I, I really do think we need some independent testing of this uh, to really be sure um, you know, how reliant on upscaling this game is. We do see that it supports the latest upscalers, which is good, and, the and frame generation, which is good. But um, yeah, how reliant on it for performance actually is this? Because again, they didn't say they were using it, but there's, there's definitely reason to be suspicious. Uh, are you guys excited about this game? Do you want me to benchmark it on the channel? Let me know in the comments, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.